Hello everyone uh, and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. Now, one of the questions that people have always been asking me is that how do you keep updated with technology? Like as a developer, what do you have to do to make sure that you are updated with technologies and you're not getting obsolete? So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can use so that you are updated with technologies. And by updated, it doesn't really mean, oh, wow, I'm a master of the new thing that just came out two weeks ago. I am more in terms of talking about that. Well, yeah, there is something and I know it works and I know how it, I know that some parts of it, I have played around with it a little bit. And yes, if the time comes and that if the time is right and that the requirement is right, I know that there are some things out there that can help me out, all right? Now, the, in the old, good old days, I would subscribe to RSS, which is still common. I mean, you can go ahead and subscribe to RSS, it's perfectly fine. But these days, if you are trying to stay updated, I would more go towards the newsletters. And the reason that I would go towards the newsletter is that someone else is doing the hard work for you. So. And this is true not only for iOS development, but also for JavaScript, Python, machine learning, whatever you want to learn, just go ahead to Google. And if you go ahead and type in uh, iOS newsletters, okay? And you can see many different newsletters come into play. You can see that there is 10 iOS newsletters that you should subscribe. Okay, let's go ahead and check out what these news, newsletters are. And you will see that uh, you know, App Coda Weekly, Awesome iOS, and then you have Digest or something, Indie iOS Focus Weekly, uh, iOS Dev Weekly, which is the pretty much the most famous one, I would say. So definitely go to them and then subscribe. I mean, subscribe means that you are simply going to enter your email over here and click the subscribe button. Now, the good thing about these newsletter is that people, uh, like Dave and people and his staff, I guess, uh, volunteers, uh, they will be the one who will doing the hard work for you, finding all these really cool uh, articles for you uh, that they have read, and they're going to be sharing it and you will receive an email uh, Thursday, Friday, whatever their timeline is, it's Friday for iOS Dev Weekly, and now you have everything in your email. You don't really have to go to 10 different websites to find all these cool articles and code and all those videos and all the stuff. Now you can get away with just reading the abstract or if you like something, okay, animation or something, you can just go there and read about it. So that's one of the best ways to keep updated with uh, all the new technology stuff that is taking place, all right? And obviously there are so many different newsletters. So I would say start with like two or three and then try to just glance over it that what's going on in the world, okay? So that's the first way, which is newsletter. Now, the second way, and I really like to listen to podcasts. So podcast is a really good way. And the reason it is a good way is that if you have a long commute or if you go want to go out for a jog or taking your dog for a walk or doing any kind of, even for swimming, I actually listen to a lot of podcasts while I'm swimming. Um, so uh, you have to buy those headphones that are uh, compatible with swimming. But anyways, I mean, you can see that these are the podcasts that I'm subscribed to, and it's, it's a growing list, all right? So over here on the search, just type in the topic, and let's go ahead and search it. So I'm gonna search for iOS development and see what comes up. Now, it will also show you some video courses if you're interested in that, but you can see different shows that you can subscribe to. And these are all like different coding shows. I mean, there some of them are, or most of them are iOS related, but some of them are just coding related. But you can see a huge list, all right? So this is a great way to stay updated. And a podcast is a different kind of a thing. The reason it is different is that uh, you are listening to it kind of like outside, or maybe you are going on for a walk or swimming or exercising or these kind of things. All right, so apart from newsletter, apart from podcasts, the other way that you can get updated is watching videos. Now, videos are time consuming and I do understand that, but to be really honest, there are some concepts uh, in JavaScript that I could only understood by watching a video. 
So there will be some cases where you have to watch a video to understand it, uh, you know, completely. So go over there to Udemy or even YouTube and go ahead and check out iOS development videos. Uh, if you are beginner, then you can obviously start with the beginner courses. If you're advanced, you can jump onto a particular topic. So maybe you want to learn about Surf UI, then you go ahead and search for Surf UI and get those courses, all right? But obviously, if you're a beginner, you will search for different courses and all that. So that's a very good way to also study. The next one is Stack Overflow. So if I go to Stack Overflow website right now, now you might be thinking, hold on, how would I learn from Stack Overflow? What, what does that even mean? Well, I'll give you a very quick example, all right? Let's go ahead and click on Tags. And these are all the tags. And let's say that you're learning. If you're learning, first of all, obviously try to find a answer, which I'm sure it will be already been answered on the Stack Overflow website, because there were some other beginners before you, hundreds of thousands, and they most probably have asked the same exact question that you're asking. So those questions have already been answered, and you can go ahead and try to find those answers. Now, let's say that after maybe a year of development, uh, if you don't find the answer, obviously post a question. And when you post a question, make sure it is in the right format and descriptive and all that stuff. Now, let's say that after one year, you are fluent or at least at a junior level for iOS development, all right? So at that point, now it is time for you to help other people out. So you have seen that I am searching for iOS. Obviously, you can select JavaScript. If you're learning JavaScript, it doesn't really matter. And there are 626,000 questions available for you to answer. And let's say that I want to check out this question. How do I add a Swift package that references classes in my main Xcode project? So read the question carefully. And then maybe I don't know the answer. So I'm going to go ahead and do my research. And the good thing about these questions is that these questions are coming from real people sitting at real job facing real problems. So if you're trying to, if you solve this problem, then you solve a particular problem in the real world. And now next time you face that problem, you know the answer. So let's say that you do research and you post your answer right over here. All right. And well, maybe it got a thumbs up, maybe it got a thumb down, whatever. You tried your best. Maybe that was not selected as the actual answer. That's fine too, because I always think of Stack Overflow is a win-win-win situation. And the reason is that, uh, first of all, you can ask question and get answers. So that's a win. The second thing is that you can answer a question and then somebody will say, yes, that's a correct answer. That's a win for you. And the third win, which some people don't really think about, is that you answer a question and your answer was wrong, but somebody else answered those questions and their answer was right. Why is that a win? Well, it's a win because now you learn something new. So maybe your technique was not good, but somebody else more experienced, they had a much better answer and now you learn from them. So it's all about sharing knowledge on Stack Overflow. I think that's very, very important. And the last one, which is very good for keeping updated, and let me actually show it over here. Let me pull it out over here, which is Twitter, all right? The social platform. Now, obviously, Twitter is a social platform, and it's basically how you use it. So I would say go to the Twitter search, which is on the top right-hand corner, and go ahead and search for iOS dev hash. And you will see all the people who are uh, basically uh, tagging that particular hash sign. And you can see a lot of people come up, uh, like Antoine, Antoine. And you can see that he has a good following. He is very active, definitely worth following. Then you have Andrew. And you have many other people that come up. Sometimes it's also a good idea to go to these really good, amazing people like Antoine and check out who they are following. So if I click on this, uh, Antoine is following like 600 people, 
Well, there might be really good people that he's following. Okay, David Smith is excellent, so we should definitely follow him. And all of these other people, you can go ahead and check them out. All right. So that's how you will get updated. Uh, and you can also go ahead and read their past posts so that you know that what exactly is going on and what they post. And, you know, uh, that's how you also keep updated. So Twitter is also a great medium for uh, sh sharing articles, sharing information, sharing videos, and keeping updated. And I hope that uh, with all the different things that you can do now, like newsletters, podcasts, videos, Stack Overflow, RSS feed if you want to, and also Twitter and following the right people, that will definitely keep you up to date. All right, so I really hope that this uh, video has helped you to clarify or to maybe clear up the concepts of uh, how to keep you updated when the technology is moving so fast. Thank you so much.